And I'm going to assume, Joe, appreciate you. I'm going to assume that if you're on this call, you've seen me do trade plans before, but at least this time we can do it live. I can, I can see your questions rolling in as they're happening so I can help you. Obviously, it looks like it's kind of a smaller group, so if you've got questions, absolutely, you're not going to get buried so we can talk about it. And we had a pretty large bull push today, so there's quite a bit to kind of go over. We were kind of consolidating, forming ranges, and then we kind of had a plus one and a half deviation move today. Uh, so it was a pretty large, uh, significant move to the upside. So there's quite a bit to talk about. And so as you know, every single evening, uh, I start every single trade plan on the bird's eye view, which I consider the bird's eye view uh, the four-hour chart. And I believe, right, everything's just my opinion. Take what you like, take what you don't like. But I believe the four-hour chart's the most important chart to understand for a day trader. And when I'm looking here at the four-hour chart, typically I start with content, Right, so content is just using some free indicators, right? And I just like looking at the bias. Are we overbought or oversold? Because all, and every every single charting time frame does this, but all the market does is cycle. It just cycles from overbought to oversold, overbought, oversold, overbought, oversold, overbought, right? So what's the next logical progression uh, on this chart? And obviously the market can do whatever it wants to do, but the next logical progression would be to see a cycle back down. And we never know how far it's gonna cycle, but just looking at this, just logically, uh, we're overbought. I would be anticipating a cycle back down. At a minimum, we got a 27.20 target. And then of course, we got the largest price magnet I have ever seen uh, on any market. Joe, wanna make sure you can hear me. Sam, Lance, if you can hear me okay. If you can let me know if you can hear me. Joe, maybe you have to come out and come back in. Lance says it's all good. So RJ says it's good. So um, let me let Joe. Uh, and so clearly you can see we're severely overbought. Our daily chart is over, also is overbought as well. And so one thing when you look at this, right? So an example, when you look at this four hour chart, clearly you wouldn't be buying up here, right? So the cycles also help you for like what not to do. Clearly I wouldn't buy up here. I mean, that'd be ridiculous. Uh, if I were to buy this chart and I'm like, we need pullbacks before, and clearly the chart is bullish. So you might be thinking, oh, why not bull buy a bullish chart? Well, yeah, of course we can buy a bullish chart, but we need some pullbacks before we even think about buying. And it'll be a little bit clear where these pullback buy triggers will be uh, on the smaller time frames, but just quickly let me show you that daily chart so you can see what's going on Obviously our daily chart is overbought as well uh, But I did mention on Sunday night right on Sunday night. We were literally at 2700 and I said 2800 will be the the touchdown for the Bulls 2600 will be the touchdown for the Bears. So uh, the Bulls have kind of taken an early jump, but I but that's, of course, looking kind of a longer term, you know, a week to two weeks, kind of these bulls continue. They want to be hunting uh, that 2800. So this chart absolutely has more room to run. But I do think as far as day traders go, we're going to see some cycles before we even uh, get to that 2800. So if we go back to the four hour, very obvious. Uh, we are overbought. Clearly, we wouldn't be buying up here. And so we. I'd like to see some pullbacks. And there is going to be some opportunities for some breakouts and then some bear targets uh, to the downside. So now that we built that story here, four-hour charts, very obvious. I now move to the 15-day, 15 15-minute 15 plot chart. And I don't need any, no more indicators. I typically use a clean candles because I want to see these change control inflections. And so what I like to do... I'm, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to all of the relative structure. All this structure down here will likely not be relative for the next 24 hours. So we're just looking for the next 24 hours, which all of the next structure here is pretty much what's relative for the next 24 hours. So what I like to do is I like to start exactly where price is, and then I start planning and visualizing. Since the market, can, obviously the bias is to the downside, but since the market can do whatever the heck it wants to do, I got to be prepared uh, for nearly every sing single scenario. So what am I going to do or not do if this chart continues to grind higher? And then what am I going to do or not do at every single zone if we start dumping to the downside? So first things first, Let's talk about if this chart continues to cycle higher. So this 2748 is a two month high. 
So if we do continue grinding higher tomorrow, clearly I'd want to be looking for my lower high sell triggers, but we just need to be mindful that if the higher we go tomorrow, we're not going to have any structure up here for over two months. And so if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I like trading where there is structure, right? I like trading where there's, where I have an, where bears or bulls, I can look to the left and I can, and uh, I like trading where there is actually, so just a quick example, right? You notice here and you look left, there's clearly structure down there. Uh, but up here we look left, there's no structure up there. And so if you notice the last two nights, we have been what I like to call equilibrium, where we had structure to the upside and to the downside. Well, now going into tonight, we only have structure to the downside. We don't have it to the upside. And so that does not mean that we can't be looking for nibbling, looking for sell triggers either off of that plus 0.5, or if we rally, stay patient, look for change control off of the plus one, because that's really all we have up there. Pretty much the only thing is the context of a plus 0.5 or the plus one. And so I would just wait for either change control off of that plus 0.5, right? You'd get up in there, wait for that one minute candle, lower high. You don't see change control. And then I just wait and wait and wait and see if I can't get change control off the plus one. So that's pretty much all I'm looking for. Uh, if we do go higher, first sell zone, second sell zone, no structure to the left. And so I've been doing this a long time. Typically, when there's no structure to the left, you just got to expect lower win ratios. It is. And I know what you might be saying, right? It's even more overbought, Sean. Sell it. Yes, yes. No, no, I get that. But I have found it difficult to sell. Like I have lower win ratios if I sell and there's no structure uh, to the left. It makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, I, I have found I have a lower win ratio when I sell and there's no structure to the left. So just be mindful. I'm just telling you, be mindful uh, of that. So that's pretty much all I'm looking for. So if you are struggling with your patience and your discipline, you have to come in here and put your notes on your charts. So our plus 0.5 would be our first sell zone. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and I'm going to go to the, the notes, which is the T right here. So let's put our notes down. First sell zone, wait for lower high change control. Uh, I'm going to be using about five to six points, five to six points, take profit target. So put your notes, okay? And then here's our second. Wait for change control. Again, five to six points. So you gotta make sure that you're putting your notes down uh, so that way when you hit your desk in the morning, you just, you're just literally doing exactly what you said uh, to do. Or even tonight, even during the London session, typically I, I, tip, I don't normally trade at this time because the volume is just a little too low, but you will see volume pick up near the London session, which is 3 a.m. Eastern. Once the 3 a.m. Eastern hits, that's when you can start seeing more volume and there's no hourly binaries available, uh, but you can look at the spreads, Nadex touch brackets, or you can do traditional futures as well. So that's pretty much what I'm looking for if I go higher again, and you can see these bulls are gunning. Uh, like I wouldn't sell right here, uh, I would wait. Uh, but you can see when there is no structure to the left, it does make it a little bit more difficult, okay? So now the next step is clearly the bias is to the downside. So that's where most of the structure is. So this is, I would really wanna really see uh, a move uh, to the downside. And so what I'm going to be looking for, you can already see what the juicy, it can, so if somebody sees this, what, what do you think would be a really, really good and ju juicy, juicy target for the bears to the downside tomorrow? Uh, so somebody wants to go ahead and uh, throw out what they think they, because this is why it's cool to have BTG charts, because just immediately, like it's slapping you in the face. Paul says negative one, but it's actually not before, no. Paul, Sam, I would say what's before that negative one? Don't you see it, right? 80% rule, V. RJ says VA low, a negative and a half deviation to February 5th POC, a Thursday, um, Thursday POC. And then look at this. We had resistance, 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 breakout, right? And so you can just see that beautiful, beautiful target. And Paul and Sam, I'm by no means my saying that's not 
I would say that's kind of like a really long uh, target. Like there's a there's going to be a target before we get to that negative one. Paul, you're you're exactly right. It's juicy. Look at that. And so I know that these bears, that's where they want to go, right? And you can already see we're starting to exit value. So uh, what I'm going to be looking for is a line in the sand, which is pretty obvious what the line in the sand is. It's about set and Wednesday POC. And so what I would be looking for either during the London session or, uh, and actually I'd probably use set. Uh, so London session uh, or early in the morning, right? You'd want to be looking to see these bears start busting through set and then holding lower highs on that one minute chart. So there would be my entry, five to seven point mental stop loss to the upside. And then I have all of that room for TP target to the downside. Uh, for the to complete and already look we're getting a bull pop here and so that is why notice how I said I wouldn't sell now because you, you got you got to wait for a line in the sands first and so we're likely going to get some set divergence uh, and so that's this is typically why I don't trade right now this is makes it difficult it's hard to trade uh, and, um, but you can see I'm not looking for 80% rule. I'm not looking for that target yet. These bears have to get through set first and then I can look for that target to the downside. And Sam says, yeah, the multiple POCs make sense, right? Value rate low, negative and a half. February 5th POC, Thursday POC. We had resistance, 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 acceleration of volume breakout. So now I can use that as a bear target to the downside. Lewis says, how do you identify the line in the sand? So typically, uh, I, you know, clearly you can see we have a little bit of resistance right there uh, going into the end of the day, Lewis. Uh, we had a little bit of resistance right there. Uh, and then pretty much just kind of using set and um, VA high as kind of the line in the sand. You know, when I... Uh, you know, obviously we're getting this bull push, which is kind of stupid. Uh, a little bit of volume spike there, which I don't like that. Um, but typically, Lewis, I want to see, like, if you just want to make it, like, super simple, like, at least show me, like, three or four to five points worth of worth of uh, move. Again, we're talking to the downside. It's just vice versa to the upside. But I got to at least let these bears show me that I like to say, like show me that you're here to play, right? I mean, at least show me that you're showing strength. So break out through set, hold lower high, and then I can look for that 80% rule. Um, typically, Lewis, I just like to use structure. In this case, we got a set value rate high, so it makes it really simple to see. Like that's, that's right there, our line in the sand. It's very obvious. Tip, Sam, typically what's a good amount of time to look back for structure. Oh, so this is a reason I like the 15 day, 15 minute chart, right? So I like to see about two weeks, Sam, worth of price action structure, two weeks. Uh, but again, I like to also use Sam the bird's eye view, so I'll go as far out as three months. But I really, really like to have structure within two weeks, so that's why I like my 15 day, 15 minute plot chart, Sam. So let's go ahead and make those notes. and. What's really um, key here is that it's pretty greedy to enter here and hold all the way for the 80% rule. I mean, that is 13 points worth of greed. I'm, all, I'm really only, I'd only look for about five to seven points and then just take profit. So let's go ahead and put our notes down in there. So breakout through set. Hold lower highs on that one minute or five minute chart. And then I just use five to seven points worth of mental stop to the upside and five to seven points worth of TP target to the downside so that you can keep pretty much a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. And so um, first thing, so that, that's, we need to, like again, I would not sell right now. This is why I always wait for lines in the sands first. Yes, I'll lose out on a little bit of profit, but notice how I just saw that spike 
before the spike happened, remember I said, I'm, well, I'm not selling yet, right? And then boom, we get the spike. I got to wait for lines in the sands first, uh, and then I ride with the breakout. Lance, this is getting... So over the years, um, I have kind of changed um, kind of what I do on a daily basis. But I, if you notice in my trade plans, I really like HA candles for bird's eye view. Four hour, one hour, 30 minute chart, right? The HA candles help you see that trend and they help you see kind of reversal stars. And then typically when I go into kind of the worms eye view to get the entry, I will use like these normal candles here. So I like the HA. Remember how I teach my wife kind of how to see those HA? Remember I call it the trifecta for her uh, inside the course. If you have taken the course, I teach, I teach my wife to see the HA trifecta, the HA cycle. And I like to see that on the bird's eye view. And then for my entries, I like to use kind of normal candles for my entries. So if we go back here to the bird's eye view, see how I like to see these HA. Look how it's so, like I love these HAs. They're just so clear to find cycles. So I like that. Uh, and then I like kind of using normal candles for my entries, where to enter, where to take profit, uh, things like that. So if you watch my live trading videos, typically I'm entering on that one minute or five minute chart using normal candles. So, and then as far as first buy trigger, uh, this, this isn't terrible right there, right? Uh, typically, Paul, yes, I do. So either a five or a one, Paul, kind of depends on the time of the trade. If it's an hourly binary, I like to use the one minute chart. If you're kind of doing a daily binary with four or five hours on the trade, probably a five minute chart for the entry. Um, so it just kind of depends, you know, if you're doing such a short hourly binary, I want to be really key on that one minute chart. But most of the trades, Paul, I'm using the one minute chart. Um, so as first as as far as first buy zone, typically, you know, a value area low, a negative and a half, two POCs, there is pretty good content and sorry, this would be context. There is pretty good context here uh, to say kind of a pullback quick buy trigger. But if I were to buy right there, it would need to be so quick in and out because what would be what would be kind of the problem of buying right there at 27.30, right? And this is why we look at the bird's eye view. We know that that bird's eye view wants to cycle and dump because if this four hour candle sell trigger takes off, it has a lots of room to cycle. And so notice that's how I use this four hour chart, right? And Lance says you'd be fiddling in the middle and he's 100% right. Right? Obviously, you've been watching a lot of my stuff, right? You, you would be. You'd be fiddling in the middle. Think about this. Think about it. Think about this 15 minute chart here. And think about buying here when all of like the 15 minute, 15 day demand is like down here. And so, it, uh, but again, I'm not your daddy. I'm just here to kind of show you what I'm looking at. You can do whatever you want to do. But you just need to be mindful that if you're going to buy up here, which was used to be resistance just only a week ago. It needs to be so freaking quick. Get the heck in it. Like that's a very fast worm's eye view demand because this chart has so much room to cycle down in because everybody else sees the negative one. That's kind of the longer term target tomorrow would be into that negative one. And so you need to be mindful. But there, the thing is though, is that is pretty damn good context. You got a VA low, negative and a half, two POCs, what used to be resistance can now become support. And so I'm not, this isn't, a, this isn't that bad of a first buy zone, but you need to just understand what's going on in the bird's eye view, right? Expect a lower win ratio if you're gonna buy right there. So, and Lance, you're right, you'd be fiddling in the middle, right? I say that a lot. Uh, and so knowing that that four hour chart does want to cycle, uh, obviously, if you can catch another second breakout and try and ride that down into negative one, by all means, that would be pretty freaking awesome if you can catch it. Uh, but for me, if my if I were to say like what's my first buy zone, I would need to be down into this negative one, and then of course, roughly, our um, right in here is going to be really really close to our negative one and a half. 
in the largest price magnet I've ever seen, 2700 sitting down there. And so it, one of the things, since I've been doing this so long, when these four hour candle sell triggers take off, like they literally, it's, it, it, it can be sometimes difficult um, to understand where they're gonna stop. And so uh, clearly they have even more room to run through 20, look at this, they have even more room. 2720 is, isn't even middle blue Keltner. And so see how I use this four hour cycle? 2720, which is, which is the negative one tomorrow, that's not even the middle blue Kellner. So if the four hour chart like literally really takes off, it has lots of room. So anything that you buy tomorrow, you gotta make sure that it's really quick and gotta make sure that you're waiting for change control. Like don't just be, don't be buying, I wouldn't be buying first touch. Make sure you're seeing change control. You know, if it's morning V time, that gives you an added edge uh, because this absolutely has more room to even blow through negative one. It has room to run all the way to 2700, which is the largest price magnet I've ever seen. Uh, and so it just, like understanding the bird's eye view cycle will keep you out of a lot of bad trades, right? And so buying anything tomorrow, it's really, in my opinion, it's gonna be kind of in the heat of the moment. It's gonna come down to the time, like if I were to buy, I wanna make sure it's during morning V time. So it's gonna be interesting to see if we'll be here during morning V time or here during morning V time, right? It's, um, like if I were to say what's my favorite, favorite, favorite place to buy, it's down into that 2700 right there. So anything up here, you just gotta be mindful of what's going on in the bird's eye view. And Lewis, yes, I have been showing that weekly chart. Uh, and so a lot of this bull, and that's why I said, Lewis, if you watch Sunday night's trade plan, 2800 is the touchdown for the bulls. And then, because if we go back to the weekly, you can see that uh, this weekly is, see the thing, See, what this weekly is good for is like longer term swing trading. But see, we're day traders, so we're just trying to say, we're trying to trade cycles just inside that thing. But when you really look at this in like a huge, not necessarily, we're going from bird's eye view to a daily chart, it's a plane view, or sorry, daily charts, an eagle view, this would be the plane. Uh, I mean, this absolutely has even more room to cycle on the weekly. Uh, this just makes it difficult to day trade a weekly chart, right? But yeah, I mean, there is lots of room. And so that's why I say that 2800 right there, you can see how there's quite a bit of uh, structure around 2800. So clearly we have room to cycle into 2800. And so that's where I'd be looking for some pretty, uh, 2800 is kind of the, um, that's decision time. We bust through 2800 and finally hold higher lows. We may be seeing new highs, but if 20, 2800 is like, that's it. Like that's the, that's the decision time. It's gonna be interesting to see. If we do make it to 2800, it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens from there. But you can come in here and make your notes, whatever you need to put. Um, like I said, uh, I'm a little bummed that we're at two month highs when I chose to do uh, the trade plan tonight because there's not a ton to do, right? I mean, we don't have any structure to the upside. And, and then to the downside, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty sticky to know which one of these is going to hold uh, because obviously bulls typically always take the stairs and the bears take the elevator. Some of my worst trades by far, like it's not even close, some of my worst trades are trying to pick up a four hour candle sell trigger and it just keeps dumping and it's like, holy cow. And so it's, it, it's difficult. And that's why I have a lot of videos on waiting for change control. If I wait for change control, I have, I typically do pretty well. And so if you, uh, you know, like I said, and it all kind of comes down to, too, as well, like the time, you gotta be mindful of the time of the day. If I am gonna buy, I wanna make sure I'm buying around morning V time, right? Uh, and then clearly most of the support's gonna be down into that 2700, which would be right just, beyond a negative one and a half deviation. Paul, yeah, I mean, it's ever since I started doing those roughly about 18 months ago is when I really started teaching, like waiting for proper change control, man, it's been a huge game changer.
Do you look to HA for POC? Can you rephrase that question, Lance? I'm not actually sure what you mean. Yeah, I know. So I guess I'm not understanding. Do you look for hike and ashy for POC? I don't really know what that. I'm not. I, I'm not sure what you're asking there. No, <laughs> Lance. I know. So point of control, right? I guess I'm just. Can you rephrase what you're asking? Because I still don't understand. So do you look for hike and ashy for point of control? I don't know what that means. I use the. Point of control is the value area. I use the value area indicator to get point of control. If that's what you're asking, I guess. I use the value area indicator. So I just draw the box and then every day it'll sh So basically what point of control is, is like an example. Tomorrow's, like you can see Wednesday's POC 2741.75, right? since it's a quarter, it goes by quarter points. This right here is where there was more volume in today's trading at 2741 than any other price point. So is that, if that makes sense at all, that's what point of control. So when they cluster, so point of control can really help with targets and line in the sands, and they can help with uh, pretty much anything. And that's why I like leaving them on. So notice that we cluster here. Clearly we have lots of volume right there. So I like when they cluster. Yeah, POC are all volume, correct. Just quickly, I only wanted to keep this about 30 minutes. Um, slash in queues, very similar. So the line in the sand would be those two POCs, breakout, hold lower high. There's your 80% rule. Uh, and then slash YM is pretty much Pretty much the same thing. Uh, I wouldn't wait for 80% rule on that. I would TP at the negative and a half. So they're all pretty much the same. All three, and, and, and I know that they're all three 80% correlated. You just always pick. You just pick the one that has the best edge at that specific moment in time. So EMS change control. You just so first off. Um, if you go inside of our Facebook group, and this is a forum, five years worth of posts in here, and there's just click right there to where it says search this group and type in change control, you'll probably see dozens and dozens of posts. Uh, change control, change control, change control, change control, change control. There's probably a hundred. And then you can also type in change control on our YouTube page and you'll see hundreds of, uh, not sorry, not hundreds, at least a dozen plus videos on change control. But basically EMS to be make it very simple, change control is just waiting for higher lows and lower highs. It'll make a lot more sense when you see it in the live trading. When you see it, when you see me do it in a live trade, type in change control and it'll make a lot of sense. But hey, I do, I, like I said, I only wanted to keep this about 30 minutes. I hope this was helpful. I'm a little bummed. I did chose to do this tonight. I am a little bummed that we had this large bull pop. Uh, I wish we were at equilibrium because that makes it a lot better trade plan. Um, but I hope that like your takeaways, like understand that cycle and understand, make sure you put your notes on your charts to keep you disciplined, right? Have your notes on your charts, record yourself trading just like I do, and then put the post it in the Facebook group and I'll watch. But hey, I'm going to let you guys go. I appreciate everybody coming on. I... I humbles me that people actually like to come on here and uh, listen to me ramble about the market but I love this stuff I think it's awesome I think it's fun um, and I